Hello and welcome back to the Ten Fine Podcast. Today we're here with me, Lucas Normal, and Beefing. Right. This um, episode sponsored by Northern Movement, so if you want a nice top, get on them. We're here with um, Joe from Rats. How are we, mate? I'm okay. How are we, boys? I'm okay. I'm good, I'm yeah, good. I've also got some club that I'd like to uh, <laughs> promote. It's been made to you. Darren from Miss Rep. And we've got some belter clubber if you want to go and get on at him as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Check the cap. Um, so we normally take it back to the start. So what made you guys? What was your? Let's take it back to your upbringing. What was your upbringing like to start off with? Um, I had a boss upbringing. Me man, uh, boss childhood. Uh, grew up in Aintree most of my life, but all, all my family were from like the Kirkdale area. So I was always in my grandma's when my mum was in work. So the only place that I'd really play out lived on a main road in Aintree. So the only place I play out was like round there. Uh, that was like my group of mates, and I was a, I was different. Though, so I went to my mum. So it sent me to a private school. Yeah. So like when I was in a private school, to me, I was like, to all them, I was like the posh kid. And then to the kids, like, we were like by me nans and that. I was like, no, sorry, to all them, I was like the poor kid. Yeah. And like to all the kids by me nans, I was like the posh kid. So it's like couldn't really fit in. And then the only place that I really found refuge, lad, was just music. And like when I was in me nans, me nans would have all Beatles tunes and Elvis tunes and all that old music, fucking Smokey Robinson and all that stuff. So I was always like infatuated by that music. There was a little pink guitar in my grandma's house and I was always in my grandma's all, all summer. I used to live there all summer. So obviously my mind be working. It'd be better for me to play out. I could do what I wanted in my hands. I could go out and play out, and, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there was a little pink guitar and uh, that would me, my auntie got my cousin, like a little pink guitar out of our house or something. And I just started strumming it one day and then my uncle, he was in a band, he walked in and he just, he like, he just said, said like, so you want to play the guitar, do you? And I said, yeah. And he said, yeah, so he tunes it up, plays it, showed me a few chords. And then that was me. I was about 12 or 13, about 10 years ago. And then from that, started having a few lessons with him. Um, and then music just become my life, bro. I just wanted to have my first little, my ma had done some, like a, she ma has got like a printing shop. So that's why she paid for me, my private school and all like that. She used to, yeah. fuck, you don't need the family used to pay in cash and that, don't know what I mean? It was one, she was like, <laughs> she was, yeah. it was one of them. And she was a, uh, obviously, self-employed business woman from, from Kirkdale. She's done proper well for herself, my mum, you know what I mean? She's an amazing woman, wouldn't be where I am without her, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, well, done, she'd done the printing for the shop in Crosby next to the school and there was a, like a, a music shop opening and there was open mic night in there and it was like you know everyone could go and try out the guitars and all that so she got me and my uncle saying a little invitation and there was like a special guest no one knew who the special guest was and then there was this kid who was like above me in school and he was like he was like he was like i had only seen him like in the hall and in the other people's form rooms like playing the guitar because sometimes like other years are coming to your form room because they had a lesson in there you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they be yeah. in your, your year and that. And he was like one of the other kids, you know, I never used to get on. He was just to skip me because I was a scouser and that. It was crazy. So yeah. I, he was like, I'd never heard him trying to like terrorise me or anything or like say anything. So I just yeah. said, and he was an amazing guitarist, bro. He's probably better than I am now then. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was sick, like proper classically trained, had all his lessons and all that since he was quite young. And I said, hey, do you want to play Wonderwall? Let's get up and <laughs> do a little tune. You know what I mean? And um. He said, yeah, and we've got up, and then the special guest was Bonehead out of oh, Oasis, that. lads, and that was, like, my first time performing in front of anyone, and then he said, like, oh, he, j he buzzed off me and said, oh, you're like a little Liam and all that, you <laughs> know what I mean? I was buzzing with that, and then, because I had, like, that, like, little seal of approval, yeah, that was like, yeah, this is serious now, I'm going to do music, you know what I mean? It's yeah. that that close. Yeah, it's felt that way. My nan, like, she was, like... She like was into the Beatles. So she she went to see my nan's been to see the Beatles more than anyone mates. Like she's seen seen the Beatles yeah, over yeah. hundred times. She went to the Iron Door. It's like Paul McCartney used to fucking knock around with her and that not like in that way, but like, you know, like <laughs> she 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 she's been in a few parties yeah, with yeah, him. Yeah. She, she she he took him he took her for a bevy once to a boozer, which if you ever go into the Williamson Square and you've got that uh, that little theatre, what is it? The uh, I don't know whether it's the old Everyman Theatre or something. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't yeah by, mean, by no, the no. fountains. Yeah, there used to be a boozer there. And he took her in there, bought her one drink here and a cousin, and then she bounced. But he asked her in that booze, he said, do you want to go to Hamburg? And she said, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my nan's little account, you know what I mean? So it was all seemed like the Beatles and all, the it's just seemed proper, so close and yeah. achievable, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was just me set for life then. 
mu just so you say you're now like proper got you into it like, yeah my nan, my nan and my nan's now. brother like that yeah. side of the family the door and family they were yeah they, they, they were like they got me into music 100 percent. it was it was that side that were, like influenced it and they were like because my nan had that like sort of authority like my nan always wanted me to do the music yeah. so it was like my nan wants me to do it do you know what yeah. i mean yeah I so like yeah. sort of it was seen as like a proper job because she's always seen people do was like no people are saying music isn't a proper job but they, but yeah i just started doing gigs and boozers and busking in town straight away and from that, just that by yourself at that point, yeah, yeah, just by myself for years, just making loads of money, just playing cash in hands, just playing all boozers everywhere, just learning my trade. I used to go to a youth centre on a uh, on Everton, uh, called the Shoesy House, and that's where I started doing like my first gigs after that, like rehearsing and stuff. And from the youth workers there, they knew people who worked in pubs and that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then. It's no football two and two together. I just ends up fucking playing all over the show, lads. It was my, I just played everywhere from like the age of fourteen. I was just used to make loads of dough doing it. What and tunes were you doing? Just covers. Covers, yeah. And that was like me crap. I just didn't want to do music to Yeah. To be fair. I just thought thought like like that this is a sick job anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like yeah, I was like, well. even if it doesn't everyone was going, What's your plan B? I was always saying music. Like, <laughs> I can make money from music without being famous. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That was always like my my vibe. Yeah. Until rats like, you know what I mean? <laughs> So when did the band like come about then? Or was Rats the first band you've been in or was the one before? It's the that? second bands I've been in. But the other band was just like, you know, just mate, a group of mates. Like I ended up like obviously through living in Aintree, I ended up meeting a lad in the Shoesy Youth Centre in like by Scotty, yeah. whose family was also from by there, but he lived up in McGull. He was a lad called Lol. And we just he was like, Oh yeah, and he's from by ours and he's done music as well. So we started like a little band. Yeah. And it was just that was we had like a mates thing. It's like, you know, we, we were like 17, 18. It wasn't like serious. Yeah, there was yeah. no yeah. scene in Liverpool back then like there is now. You know what I mean? There's loads of bands. Like if you're 17, 18, like now's the time to be proper yeah. being in a band, but back then yeah. it, it wasn't, you know what I mean? And um the band just didn't really do anything, lads, and then I started it, it split up. I, I we kept the rehearsal room though, so like he, Lowell would still be in a band, in like a in like a new band, and I was I just like sit in there. It was a sick room, core tens, where the Dixie Teen Hotel is now. Yeah, that was like our rehearsal room for like like four years, and in there there was like there was this our fella called Pete, who was drum for all sorts of like people. I won't mention like all names like Showboat and that. He won't like he's in that body. He's played for all sick people in in yeah. Liverpool. He's a proper respected drummer. Got, and uh, he had this room called Court 10 and he he like sort of saw in me and Lowell and like sort of scoot, he played the drums so he, he, the first thing he's done is like taught, taught us the drums as well as well as the guitar and made yeah. us more versatile and then he was like always encouraging that we learn more instruments and I there was a piano in there there was drums in there there was basses in there and you didn't have access to that in, in your house you know what I mean so yeah, I like, yeah. literally just lived in this room we used to pay him £50 a month and we could just live in basically live in this room but and just yes, and that's what that while Lowell was in his band, I just done it with anyone and everyone, and just like done it as more of a on a Friday night thing because I'd always be gigging in town in like Wall of Fame on Matthew yeah. Street or like, yeah, you know, making money to places like that, you know what I'm saying, like all the Irish pubs and stuff. And used to work for Signature Living playing all the Hendus with like a fucking <laughs> a beatboxer, you know what I mean, like <laughs> to, to, it was, done loads of things, and it was just one of them, bro. Like, I ended up being in college at one of Lowell's gigs and seeing Paul who's now that you had him on the yeah, podcast he the yeah. Yeah. he was in the Mr. Eans now and Paul come up to me we were knew each other in college and that and he said at the gig he said what are you doing with yourself now and I was just like I'm just making money from music and all that and at the time I had a little job going to China going to teach music out there in a place called Queen Dao yeah it's meant to be the bright in china i've heard <laughs> yeah. and like they do all surfing and that and all that's gear and it's like yoga and kung fu's in the curriculum for the school so you get to like, get involved with all that stuff while you're over there i was like yeah that's a bit of me that just go out to china for six months and just proper get his in you know yeah. what i mean just fucking you know get all clean free me body of all toxins and yeah. know what i mean and just like yeah. be one of them and stands off me pinky and that <laughs> <laughs> and um that was like my goal and then, so Paul's come up to me at this gig and said, we'll, we'll have to have a jam before you go to China then. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I said, yeah, sounds. Who's going to play bass? And he says, Mason over there, he plays bass. And I'd seen Mason play the guitar 
from like across the room like a year before yeah and say like someone's like 20 meters in your distance yeah do you yeah. know what i mean and you just see the fingers go <laughs> and you're like, I, just, I just knew like he's not fucking around him like <laughs> half the rest of the people yeah. in this college yeah. you know what i mean yeah. he's he's on it and he was like less like in naughty and then i was thinking and he's one of the he's not like no offense to anyone who's dresses like he wasn't like you know one of them fucking outserverted fucking floral shirts and the, yeah, yeah you know what i mean like yeah. like did it like did it like a lot of the people they got like all the gear no idea and all yeah. that you know what i mean like <laughs> in the college they were like no i'm saying good college like as well though there was the, the boss teachers there you know what i mean but um so mason he i just seen him like playing guitar and that was like a year but the very same night at like the college party i see like a bottle come flying from the distance <laughs> and like landed like in my vicinity you know like about yeah. like two meters in my vicinity yeah i was bladdered and i was feeling proper tough and that you know what i mean so i went on front of the bar six of them and mason was one of them and mason and i said wait you saw fucking throwing bottles at me and all that and he was just went no mason went no we d i didn't that was me who threw the bottle i didn't mean to throw it at you though like i just threw it didn't think anyone was there and it was it wasn't like before and i know what i mean it was sweet. No. yeah but went, and I always we always have argue about that. We always joke about that. So that's how we like the first time we ever met, you know what I mean? And then like he's just come up and just fucking says, Yeah, that'll be Paul went, you wanna be in a band with Joe? Have a little jam, he's got that because I have my own studio. Like I've got my own studio, fucking come down, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it was yeah. easy for me to have you know what I mean? But I'd always jam with older people or like all our fellas and that who'd yeah. come down through Pete all fucking our fellas from like the fifties and that. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, so got them to come down to the studio. We've done like three tunes in a night, just enough to make the Mundy Club in the cavern. Don't know if you've ever heard of that. Ian really Pra Ian Pra's from a band called Amsterdam back in the day. And now he does like a open mic in the cavern. Well, it's not because we're in lockdown, but every Monday does this thing called the Mundy Club. And it's like you've got to play your own tunes, three yeah. tunes. Yeah. There's a drum kit there, a bass amp there, a guitar amp there, and leads. All you need to do is plug in and play. That's it. Do you know what I mean? So you can and just like, turn up and do just it. Just turn you up don't and need do to it. Like, yeah, don't need to do now. it. Don't need to book it. You just turn up and mm. then you you say you get there at like eight o'clock and you sign your name at the at the thing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And you, you get up and play. And um so we went and done that. Like I don't know whether it was the day after or that day, or it might have been the next, I don't know. But we went we done the Mundy Club and then got bladdered after the Mundy Club. Cause the the gig went sick. And then we went right but it was like a reggae band, it went like a fucking Indie bands, yeah. like one of the tunes was in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, like we were into like Sublime and all that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, not that I don't like indie music, you know what I mean? But yeah. that was like, so it was, the band was like a piss around, you know what I mean? It wasn't <laughs> like a fucking serious, let's make money or, you know what I mean? There was a blues, like every tune was a different genre. Yeah. It was yeah. like a blues tune, a reggae tune, like half an indie tune, then like a Spanish tune. Do you know what I mean? How long did that take to write that Spanish tune like? Well, I, 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 well, through going to that school, I was I was quite good at the Spanish, but oh, yeah, yeah, but I wasn't really like in color. It was mad. It was like made one of them. It was just like I, I ended up being too into the music. Yeah, it, like in school, like the night before me Spanish, it's a mad story. Like the way you say that because <laughs> it, I've got a proper. But when I was a kid, I got I was on this thing called the John Lennon International Tour Bus. And it was yeah. where they chose five kids from ten kids. It was ten kids from Liverpool. Five of them were from Lippe, and then four of them were from um, like the the positive impact. It's like a youth centre in the yeah. south in the yeah. south ends. Like Mike Larry came up through it and all like that. Like yeah. Bosch youth centre, and uh, my youth centre, the Shuji got one spot and he put me forward. Yeah, and I got to go and work with like the Black Eyed Peas producers on this <laughs> this, this <laughs> bus, like yeah. this big multi million pound recording studio. And um met Yoko Ono. Like Yoko was like there and that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that was the night before my Spanish exam. <laughs> so like the night before my Spanish exam, that was like my best subject, what I wanted to do the best in in school, you know what yeah. I mean? And the night before my Spanish exam, I was out with Yoko Ono till like two <laughs> in the morning. Do you know what I mean? And like all fellas who like own John Lennon's fucking estate and all that. And like yeah. John Lennon's sister was there. I was speaking to her for days, not knowing who she was. She <laughs> yeah. was just on the on the bus and she was a scouter. Yeah. So like, because so she wasn't a yank, I felt like I yeah. could speak to her because yeah. everyone on the bus was American. You know what I mean? I had like the older people and uh, found out it was John Lennon's sister. I've got an email address and that, but like I've never fucking messaged her or anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but... What was Yoko like? Dead nice, you know, really lovely. Like everyone's got loads of bad things to say to her, but if you 
one of them lads like and else she was she was his birds like she, he must have loved her you know what i mean he was like, a mad character himself though weren't he? But yeah it's like you know but i don't you don't you don't take the people through the yard but i just seen as like that's the last person to see john lennon alive it's mad that isn't it yeah i think it was like that that's how i think about it just like she's the last yeah. person who ever saw john lennon alive like i met joe strummer's bird in london at like a, a fred perry party and i was like she's the last person to see joe strummer alive <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. do you get me like, yeah they're, they're, like you got to remember like they're connected to them people man you know what I mean yeah. like crazy so that was the night before my Spanish exam lad <laughs> so fuck Spanish right up <laughs> I was like keeping the exam room like that and then I walked out the exam room and the teacher went was it worth it because he knew where I was and he'd like work me up all the way through like here and I said yeah, yeah. well worth it <laughs> well worth it see you later not bad <laughs> <laughs> what was it like being in like a private school where did you where was it Merchant Sailors Merchant Sailors yeah yeah and explain what it's like like Hogwarts, lad. <laughs> like Hogwarts. <laughs> like I felt like Harry Potter. <laughs> That's literally I felt like Harry Potter, bro. And there was a bar, and there was about twenty Malfoys. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I swear, man, it was horrible. I, but I, I was like a house hopper because I never used to like. I used to, I, me ma like, not that me ma was fucking a scruff or anything like that, but like, I'd always lose me ties. Yeah. So my mom couldn't keep up with the ties I was losing, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you had to go to the school shop and all that. So I just used to rock, like get ties. I was in different, there was like four different types. So I'd be like, different house every day, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's like houses? Go, yeah, you had to go to like, like house meetings of a morning and that. Like you'd have it in the morning, yeah. yeah. You and all of your house go to like house meetings. Yeah. 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 And then they talk about like who's in the sports team, who's in the rowing team. I was in the rowing team, me. You know what I mean? But I went like didn't do any competitions or anything like that because yeah. I jibbed it like after like a year. But that's you know, crazy. But I, that. I went in the CCF. You could go and shoot guns and that other day. Like, <laughs> like I had, literally, yeah, over lunchtime, yeah, on a Thursday, I, I was in the CCF in, in the school because part of me when I was in the school before I wanted to do music because I wanted to be in the army and I wanted yeah. to be a translator. Yeah. Because I was good at the languages. Yeah. That was like my plan before music. What I had I just didn't start doing music till like year nine, in between year eight and year nine. So like. Yeah. Year eight, my plan was like, yeah, I want to be in the army and I want to do this and yeah. probably be a pilot, but I probably wouldn't be one because I've got the fucking worst eyesight ever. But yeah. you can probably get specs for it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Yeah. I wanted to be like a fighter pilot or something like. You know what I mean? And um, so I used to go to the CCF and you could go like you used to do like gun practice of a yeah. Thursday. So like of a Thursday, you go into the, the cafeteria, have your fish and chips, go downstairs, like a massive castle, there's fucking loads of guns and that's cool, man. <laughs> like an armory, you know, like if there was a zombie apocalypse, yeah, yeah. first cafe I'd go to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, lads, hey, mad. Yeah, they've got all fucking loads and loads and loads of sticks. Crazy. Like all big old Lee Enfield rifles and that. And all the CCF take them out and do shooting practice, practice with them every day. That's mad. Though. Locked up in like a proper secure vault, you're not getting them. <laughs> Know yeah. what I mean? What are you shooting at? Just like a target? Targets or a and like there's a shooting range in the school. <laughs> like there's just someone got its own shooting range. Why? Because you know? you know? it's like all you know people who go there. If you go in the army, yeah, in the CCF, and you go there and you take it for a career, you're gonna end up an officer. Yeah, yeah. Know what yeah. I mean? Admiral, colonel, <laughs> all that gear. <laughs> know what I mean? Field marshal. Yeah. Do you feel like you proper stood out, stood out being a scouter in the school? Yeah, like there was that? a few other kids like. Well, do you know they were like quite negative because I was into the music as well. Do you know what I mean? There was like two two other scouts kids. Yeah. But they were from out the way, like and you know, blades, lad. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like absolutely like they didn't know where Kirkdale was. They said, Where are you from? They said, I live in AC from Kirkdale. They went, Where's Kirkdale? And I was like, So they were that type of scouts. Where were know? they from? Like fucking that, like around eight three ways. Yeah. But that's where I lived as well. Do you know what I mean? So I don't like eight people from eight three or not and I've got loads of mates there and that, but they were like just like wannabes, you know mm. what I mean? Just proper yeah. wannabes. And like, they used to like take the piss out of like fucking, or like, your know, I felt me like my I fell and all stuff like that. And I just think, if I fucking told my I fell out the things you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> or told yeah. me, no, or told, or told me, ma. Not that they'd do anything, but I mean, like, they fucking laughed their fucking heads off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was just like, it was just mad, mad shit when you're a kid, didn't it? But I, I just stood out because of music, so I was like that one who was like, Cause I was just, it was mad cause they, like I used to call like a schmackhead. That was like the, the, the things they used to call me. Like yeah. it weren't like mad, it weren't like a nickname. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It yeah. wasn't like fucking like normal trying to bully you. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It was like proper like to me demonize, demonize. Yeah. It was like, you're going to fail. And like when I'd be like good at something like French or like Spanish, they'd like take the piss out of me for being good at it. 
Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's all of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, but I was too young to like see what it was all was all going on in there. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the teachers used to make some proper nasty comments as well. One of the teachers said to me, and uh, he said, um, brought up in, in drugs education, and he says like, oh, in a couple of years when Maddox is out, he uh, got a 10 bag of heroin in his guitar case. <sighs> You know what I mean? Like, no one else in that class even knew anyone who fucking took drugs, yeah. except for me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't see it like that at the time. Do you know what I'm saying? Imagine if that was the other way around. Lads, you said yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of them. If I could if I could go back, and I don't want to dwell on it, but if I could go back when, in hindsight, I could have probably fucking got the school fees back and everything and just fucking absolutely sued them and all yeah, that. Yeah. Life's not worth living for that. I'm not going to to hate people or hate on people, you know what I mean? I don't want to come on to hate on that school. Yeah. Anyway. But that was just my upbringing. You're there you know for what I mean? years, yeah. Like there, no, I was there for like seven years. I went oh, there yeah. for... Well, no, my whole school, bro. Yeah, like year, year one onwards. I went to reception on a, a, a school on Scotty Road. Yeah. And because we lived in Anfield at the time, my mum didn't want me going to a school in Anfield for obvious reasons. Didn't yeah. want me growing up like a kid from Anfield and potentially beefing with all her mates, kids yeah. on Scotty. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, so yeah. she had that mentality of me not being a gang kid. That was where me going to that school. It wasn't like he, he's going to go on and be this and that yeah. or he needs to be a doctor. It was just like get him in the right mind frame so he can be what he wants to be so he'll grow up a nice kid and not a yeah. little fucker. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. my mum's mentality, the best mentality that she could have took. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was the best thing that ever happened to me going to that school still. You know yeah. what I mean? The best thing. Like, yeah. Couldn't say, like, I would not cha- would not have changed it for anything, lads. You know what what I mean? did you it do after sick. school then? Well, I went straight into a college that's on music at Liverpool Music Academy. I had a fucking scream. Boss yeah. man, just to be, you know, to be around people treated like an equal. And do you know what I mean? Do you have all the same interests in that as well? Don't yeah, because like, when you... It was, it was not even the music, just the, like... Having a good experience with a teacher for what for what for like on all the levels. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they're all they're all sweet and they're all like like you know what I mean? Whereas yeah, yeah. in school in my school there was like three teachers who were got on with, four teachers, but there was I had like twelve. Do you know what I mean? Some of them used to proper lad, they used to proper scream, like had like a proper posh English and like <laughs> when you'd they used to tell you to speak differently and all like that. Everyone used to say, like, you're putting it on and all that. Man. So like I've always had like it's one of them, like, not many scousers have been through that type of to being treated like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because it's like, you're like, usually when you're like a scouser, it's like, you're fucking, you're cool, aren't you? It's yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Like, in, in school, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm like, on you. Kids say to kids, for example, yeah, I say to a kid, a kid would say, like, what, were you, what were you doing last night then, Joe? And I'd be like, took me bear down the kinney. You know, like the canal on Scotty. Yeah. Finger blasted at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and they go, and then they all go, oh, going down the kinney with your smackhead girlfriend. Oh, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they all go, Joe, down the kinney, Joe, oh, down, like all of them, like, like bad um, It was mad, so it was not, like, I can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking crazy, like proper Tory boy. Like, you'd yeah. have like school elections. Yeah. Seriously? And the Tories would win every time. Oh, oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was the type of school it was. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Was crazy like, you know. UKIP won most years as well. UKIP yeah, always wins. Okay, yeah, man. It's a crazy little school, you know. <laughs> so, um, when did like, when did Rats start like kicking off type thing? So, we met Griff at like the first gig in the Zanzibar. So, We've got, like I said, we went to the Munzee Club, done a gig, went bladded, got bladded, went to the Zanzi Bar, done a gig there. Not sorry, it was asked Tony, can we have a gig? Tony said, yeah, there's a gig next week. Done the gig. Gigs went sounds. I've went, I said to the boys, I'm going outside for a little smoky smoke. Mm. Yeah. Went outside. This cockney fella in a big fucking two grand suit, <laughs> big pink suit. This is our manager, Griff, yeah. Yeah. Sick as cock, you're ever going to meet, lads. Sick as cock, he's a fucking funny guy, yeah. He's like a cartoon character when you meet, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. a cartoon character, so he's like, all right, mate, <laughs> fucking hell. He said, I'm not going to names it up. All. He's, like, he's worked for like all big companies, you know yeah. what I mean, promoting. And he's like, he's, you know, he listed off a, a couple of good names, yeah. massive people who he's worked with, doing publish, publish, like publish size and things, you know, like yeah. being the guy who like 
in, like who keeps everything sweet sort of thing when he bad yeah. stories come up he's like fucking sorting out and all like that he's worked in like the higher ends of the like, like the music industry doing that for years you know yeah. what I mean yeah <clears throat> and then he's he's like been all he's started managing this band who the drummer in our band now was the drummer in he's like managing them and he's seen us play and said why am I managing you to the drummer I should be managing him yeah and mm. So like he's come up to me outside, I went, mate, I've worked for this and that and it. and I said, yeah. I wanted oh, I said and I, one thing I can say, this is how, how mad the story sounds, yeah. It's that like he goes, I've got a mate, yeah. <laughs> who and it's my cause like right now, yeah, this this fella, this mate is like now a good mate of mine as well. So it's not like he's a blue wearing black fella or not. Yeah. So I've got a mate, his name's Tommy Zaluki. <laughs> yeah. And he's the cameraman from Star Wars. <laughs> and Pirates of the Caribbean, the new ones, and he does Formula E. And all that, know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's big yeah. in the camera game. <laughs> and I want you to play a gig at his house. He has a house party every year. He calls it Loftus Fest because it's on Loftus Road in Shepherd's Bush. Yeah, Come and yeah. play it. There's going to be like 300 people there. And I want to use it to like test your band out. And there's going to be loads of industry people there. So if they yeah. like you. But of course, I was like fucking smoking on stage and that. No one liked me because that's the one thing that he said he didn't like. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, he, Griff said, I want to work with you. But I'd. At that time, I'd have to, I had to get session musicians to come play that gig because Mason and Paul thought I'd lost the plot and didn't believe words I was saying. Yeah. Like about, I've got this manager, he's, we're going to play in this gaff in London, it's for Disney and that, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't sound like, because yeah. I'd, I'd not, like I wasn't like, no one knew, knew about me, I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, rightly so, they were just saying like, you know, you can't believe everything that everybody tells you. Yeah. yeah. Just because you always tell the truth, Joel, doesn't mean that everyone else tells the truth, he was saying. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, I, I get that, but I had a good feeling with Griff. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I knew that he was, he weren't blagging. That I knew yeah. that, it, I knew that, like, you know, because obviously everyone oversells everything. Yeah. Because they're trying to, you know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. you could see that he was only blagging, t- like, 5% of the time. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whatever the other 95% is, like, sick, but he just, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, proper trusted them straight away. Do you know what, he's like, lad, he's, he's a social chameleon, <laughs> is what I call yeah. him, though, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, no, no offence, like, he's a, gay, he's a gay man, yeah. Yeah. So, but he's one of the boys. Yeah. Like, he, oh, yeah. He, he's quite masculine. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's cockney. He's like, you're all right, gays <laughs> Oh, one of them, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, And when I met him, it was like that. And then when you see him in like a room with girls, like especially when you're talking to people in the music industry, you know, like that, he can be with one of the lads and go, oh, are you all right, boys? And all like that. Yeah. And then girls come in. He's like, oh, darling, I love your dress. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he's, yeah, he's, he's a sick guy. So he's like, he's, he's, I had a good feeling about he's he's a people he can sell sand to Arabs. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's one of them. Yeah. But like whether he does it with, with with us or whatever, like he does loads of big shit. You know what I mean? Like behind the scenes and that yeah. not to do with it. He spends all his time working doing contracts and that. But he's the guy who gets stuff done for us. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But he's got us everything, bro. So he, he's do you like, organise where you're like doing your gigs and that? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't even do the social. I have no part in the social media. I've got the password to my Instagram, but so's two other people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I want to watch what I say and do and all like that. They, yeah. they like, it's like a strict. It's been, a, it's been crazy. It's been like a proper thing because it's like training from the start of like how to act and how to be. Yeah. On social media and the limits. Yeah, if you Lessons say the wrong learned, thing. And then, yeah. Well, like, it's best that I said the wrong thing when I've got 400 followers and someone's there telling me, you can't yeah. you can't say that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sweet. And then I won't do that again. Yeah, yeah. yeah do you know like, what I mean? Mouth. Like, mm-hmm. do you get me? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, he's good for all that, bro. And he got us this gig. We played. He Then he put a band around us. The band, we, I didn't really, we didn't know each other. So, he's like, he's pickpocketed us from, like, bands all over Liverpool yeah and then yeah. like said leave your bands you know what my CV is like come and work with this band yeah it's called Rats because everyone's a rat <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean Super. yeah and then like and but it, was, it was my name originally but that was like the, his little vibe to it yeah. yeah do you know what I mean that he added on for, to like to sell but then the, the, the name means something else you know what I mean yeah but he was like um, getting us First off, so like we didn't know each other. He goes, "Do you want to come?" I, you don't know each other. You aren't blending. I'm gonna take you to Cologne for five days on a holiday for New Year's Eve. 
Should we go to Cologne for five days? Like, absolutely sloshed. Some hilarious <laughs> stories, you know what I mean? Uh, there was like a, 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 some hilarious... The whole part... The, there was a guy called Charlie, who my manager was like looking on getting into like be like the social media guy for the band. Yeah. Mm. But he was just a football he was looking from South End on <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a fucking geezer. <laughs> yeah, he was mad. Yeah. He was crazy, but he used to he was like he used to love making things awkward. Yeah, yeah. Like and especially because mm. we were in Germany, you can imagine how many things that you can make awkward. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he was la and you know like when you go somewhere and you're the, like when you go somewhere as a scouser when I go to like like the they like scousers, but when you're like proper overtly English, you find that like a lot of like European countries yeah. don't really and like that's what I experience going there. <laughs> like cause our manager be like top ass, proper tweed suits. Yeah. Alright, love. <laughs> <laughs> How are we? <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. or, and then this Charlie plays a prank on me and he said, um, th- we, 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 were, we went into this boozer. Might have to take this one out, but I hope we can keep it in, yeah. <laughs> went this, we, went, we went to this boozer and um, there was like a little bell and around the bell was a piece of rope. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In Cologne. This is in like the Walton of Cologne. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, this is like, we'd got it out, still like out the way. We were walking oh, into yeah. the city centre. It was rough, like looked like fucking Kirkdale in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> it was grim, you know yeah. what I mean? In Cologne, yeah, bad ghettos there. And um, so we're walking through, walk past this little booze, and we go, we, go, should we go in for a little pint, Joe? <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, go in. And then I see this, this, this little bell there, and he goes, ring the bell, ring the, rang the bell. <sighs> Lads, I've never seen a booze. It just goes silent so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the booze went. Dung the bell, and then everyone went silent. And then this woman, this German woman, tall as tall as she was like Andre the Giant lad, <laughs> yeah, walks up to me because I'm short ass. And I walks up to me and goes, That bell has not been rung for 75 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was like the whole holiday, no one yeah. So, when we, were, we got to know each other, and like, yeah. I'd like banter and. It was like a funny little fucking time, lad, you know what I mean? It was a crazy, crazy little holiday. But That's yeah. a boss way to get, like... Yeah, yeah. Get yeah. you all together and that, you know what I mean? And piss off in Germany, like... Yeah, and the, that was funny. Our manager had, like, a two... Uh, I'd say it was... Not a two... He got a £200... Not £200, so it's €200, euros, so probably about 150 quid. €200 euro bottle of wine for New Year's Eve. Yeah. 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 And he sat it down on the table. He was like, cheers, boys, <laughs> to the future. And all like this, you <laughs> know what I mean, yeah? And I said, yeah, we'll get a picture. So I asked this German woman, said, excuse me, can you take a picture, please? You know what I mean? She was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, took a picture. Like that. And then Maitland, the drummer's asking for his phone back. And I'm going, right there, I'm just having a look at the pictures you've been taking today. And he's going, nah, give me my phone back. I'm like, yeah. I'm just having a look at your phone. Stop being so parrot. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I go, and he goes, throw, I said, yeah. And I just throw the phone, lad, and the bottle of wine that he's just bought for 200 euro, yeah, just goes oh. on the side, yeah. <laughs> goes all over his coat that's worth the grand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's he's lad, and he just looked at me. I was like, ah. Oh. That was like, so he just took us, that was like, and then from that, on the, the New Year's Day, we started Rats on social media. That was like, the day yeah. so we sat in oh, an yeah. Irish bar in Cologne, had all the photos, all the videos, everything ready to launch, like five cover videos, to all the stuff that we'd yeah. done, you know I mean? Yeah. And the, all the work that we'd done before, so we did so, so that as like a little street. And then from that, we launched it, launched the videos, and then it just went from there, bro. Like the first gig that we got booked, that, that he booked us for was with the Happy Mondays, 10,000 people, yeah. Jimmy's farm. That's mad, that. Like, that was the first gig. Like, that was like, it was like from zero to hero. Like, nothing, but at the same time, we weren't heroes after we got off stage at them gigs. But it's not that, like, we, we didn't smash it. But obviously, like, it's you think that, like, one gig's going to do it. It doesn't, you know what I mean? You get yeah. fans from it and all like yeah. that, you know what I mean? We were all proper nervous for it and that, like, yeah, 10, it was like, but it was, it was, it was just a mad vibe to so go that. through from, like, playing in the Zanzi bar yeah. to 10 people to, like, <laughs> yeah. your, your next gig's like 10,000 people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jimmy you speak to them? Yeah, but I, I, I didn't really. Enjoy the company. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I just don't know. It's not that they say don't meet your heroes, lad, but you know I try being nice to them, and they uh, they part me off. So, Effie. what's going on, Bez? <laughs> <laughs> what's happening, lad? <laughs> 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 
Was that is that your favourite gig you've done so yeah, far? But we, yeah, but my favourite gig that we've done because the, the the first the first gig that we got booked for was with the Happy Mondays. But in that time, we got booked for another gig with Space. Yeah. In the same in Suffolk because the manager wanted to move us to Suffolk, so we, do you know what I mean, to live by there, so we could gather a following there yeah. and take that following to London. So when we do London shows, it looks good. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because and then by doing so, create this like image in Liverpool that we're doing quite well. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So then they'll catch on in Liverpool as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we used to fucking do gigs. It was so we ended up just doing gigs in Suffolk first and we lived down there, do you know what I mean? So it wasn't like sort of you're in Cologne a week later, you're playing with the Happy Mondays. It was like sort of this is like book like set six months in advance. Yeah. So it's like from January to the summer and then from that January in Cologne, it was like, right, so like this year you're going to move to Ipswich in like July. Yeah. So like that next six months was like recording and preparing to move to Ipswich. This, from that point though, when the bassist at the time found that out, he was like, I can't do this because I'm do I like I've I've just not got the time to, to do this. Like I've already yeah. been in a band and tried smashing it sort of thing. I don't yeah. want to do it again, you know what mm. I mean? And um so yeah, for Anthony Brady. He's he's still doing the music now though, obviously he's still playing. Um we then rang Mason and was like, Do you believe me now, lad? <laughs> <laughs> do you believe me? Yeah. Happy Mondays, yeah. <laughs> Said I was bullshitting, didn't you? <laughs> and he was like, Yeah, yeah, fair enough, then, Matic, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I was like, Get down, then, you know what I mean? Come down the room again. So Mason comes back into the band for a bit, wrote some belter tunes, you know what I mean? Doc Rhodes was one of them, you know what I mean? But he's, yeah. And um, he's just like changed the words and done his own thing with it now. But like, that was like originally like a ratchet tune that yeah. like he'd started and then I'd put some words to. And then now he's like, changed. I just said, like, obviously, since he's. When he went to jail, I was like going after he'd been to jail and he got out. I was like, do your thing. Like you can, do you know what I mean? Like we thought of the other bassist, you know what I mean? So yeah, I yeah. said like, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was one of them lad. Like he, he come into the band for a bit. We played, we recorded our first single weekends. The next day he was in court and then he was in jail. So like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, he, he was just gone bro. So mad we could. Some days, some days, some days though, when we lived in Ipswich, yeah, and like around London and places like that, yeah. like he had a better bed than us in that jail cell. Yeah. Yeah. Some most nights. You <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it was a fucking, it was, it was like a time where we just went and bust some hilarious stories, like I could write a sitcom. <laughs> like a fucking hilarious sitcom, man. Like, yeah. we used to, like, like we do, like, the manager would just get us, like, the fucking, the maddest little corporate gigs. Yeah. To like pay us buy in that, you know what I mean? And we we just like play play like busking in the street and we were like living down there and we were gaining like a nice little following in Ipswich and then it just uh, we just wanted it just the town just grew sour on us. Yeah. You no, know, like, I I just don't know, lads, everyone knew us and then it just didn't it just didn't feel like it felt like I can't, like there was more going on. Like we we moved to Ipswich obviously to be closer to London, to like jump on this like the London scene. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because w from when I've grew up, there's never been a scene in Liverpool for for indie and since like the Zootons and that. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And we we the manager just said there's no scene in Liverpool. Nothing's gonna happen in Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. we come down here. Do you know what I mean? And. On my Facebook and my Instagram and that, and on his as well, because obviously it's not like he's fucking living under a rock down in Ipswich. He knows what's going on up here. It just seemed better for us. Like Liverpool was on its way up, so instead of going, needing to thinking that like you know you can, do you you have to go down south to do it now. You don't anymore. We'll do it up here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It was like well, I was feeling more that far, but like what am I doing here with all improper Suffolk? I was like. Picking potatoes out of robbing potatoes off farmers and that lad, know what I mean? Like in proper living in the fields yeah. and uh, not living in the river. Like, you know, like I, I had like a little houseboat on the river and we yeah. lived in a houseboat on the river all well. It was fucking and a few of the gas the manager put us in Airbnbs, but we ended up getting kicked out of every single Airbnb <laughs> from all the weed. Mm. Every single one laughs for fucking strong and merch. How long were you down there for? In Ipswich? Uh, about five months. It was the same it was the exact it was like Mason came home from jail a week after I got home. Oh, there, yeah. So it was like the same time Mason was in jail, I was in Ipswich. Yeah, yeah. It was mad. Yeah. And then like it was just we 
we we had a can and everything, lads. We were we were literally just just about to get the keys to a house in Ipswich, or like a band house where we were all gonna live. Yeah, you know? and we were gonna do it from there. And we just thought, well, let's just go back to Liverpool. Like I had paid for the house. Like yeah. we we would know what I'm saying. Like we yeah. wasted like fucking six hundred quid on a dep- no on a deposit and all yeah. like that, and we just went. Just got to do the right thing. Let's not. If we live here, then we're just gonna end up living here. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's like, there's more going on up in, up in Liverpool now. Did not really I mean? take off like down south. In it's London not that it didn't that. take off, lads. It was just like I just felt that there was more going on in Liverpool, and I was missing out. Yeah. Do you but, know what I mean? Like. I felt like obviously like I'd walk around Ipswich switching there'd be loads of people who would be on me and that and like yeah, that yeah. and like all of it, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was it was sick like that, you know what I'm saying? But it's Ip switch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then but the, the the thing was that all them people would come to London when we play in London. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what then, are they like as a crowd in London? Because people say it's quite a hard like crowd to please a London crowd. We've had normally. a good cause cause we done the tune with skinny man. Yeah. yeah. We get like a a skinny man crowd. Yeah. Comes down to to cause you know the skinny man's playing yeah, yeah. with yeah. rats. Do you know what I'm saying? And they think he's probably they don't know. They probably think he's gonna play council state of mind on them and that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like he when we've played in London, he's helped us sell out, like not sell out, so sort of sell tickets, like sell a lot of tickets. You know what I mean? We sold out the uh, the Disfield and Bertie Bash. Do you know what I mean? In yeah. London, which was a top where night where we are in Nambuka on Holloway Road in Camden. How did they come about like meeting him in that? In that same gaff that we it was mad because in that same gaff that we had lines, the fair you know, like the way the manager was like like, you know, not that he said not not I don't want to seem like he's anti Liverpool. He was just trying to be realistic because there yeah. was just nothing going on. Do you know what I mean? It's not anti Liverpool, but he was like, I'll, I'll get your first gig in London. Sort of thing. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it was a mad story. This is another one where this Charlie fella who was talking about in Cologne before. Yeah. yeah where he comes back to like haunts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a sick guy, though, lad. Yeah. I love him dearly. You know what I mean? He just wasn't fucking. Well, he just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was just one of them. But yeah, so he's. Um, oh, I've lost it. You've lost me. Start going on about Charlie. What was you saying? It was about how did you meet Skinny, man? Oh, yeah. So yeah. Skinny. we Charlie's booked this gig. Oh, that's hilarious, lad. He's booked this gig. Big nasty supposed to be headlining. Yeah. yeah. No joke. I know that sounds crazy, that, doesn't it? Yeah. Know what I mean? Sounds proper mad. Big nasty was supposed to be headlining. There was a poster and everything. Like yeah. it was advertised on the walls in there, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Big Nasty couldn't make it. Like, and told them like four days before, like, I can't do it. I'll tell yeah. you that. And he just went, Oh, let's just not announce it. And then Big Nasty announced it on his socials. Yeah. And then it was just must have, there was just nobody there. I don't even know whether he was, lads, I don't even know whether someone, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's only whether someone got eyes off or something for the door or what happens, something happens. Yeah. That was when that Charlie went out to picture forever. Do you know what I mean? Like after <laughs> yeah. that oh, night. Really, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, never <laughs> seen him again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But Big Nasty was supposed to be there. Went to this, this, this gaff Nambu kid on Holloway Road and it's been empty nobody there absolutely nobody and we're playing to nobody and I just turned around to the lads and went listen Bob Marley's played on this stage yeah just jam just think of Bob yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. yeah and we just started playing a bit of reggae like like one of the reggae tunes because I said listen no one's here just play that one play that one no because no one was here you yeah. know what I mean play that play that like and then um, next thing see this fucking character I don't recognise skinny man I recognised the fella next to him. You know, have you seen Green Street? Yeah. You know, yeah. Bove. Oh, yeah. You know, Greg's, yeah. yeah he yeah. was next to us. So but Bove and, and Skinny, <laughs> what man. What was he doing there? They're mates. Oh, mates they're yeah. like mates, yeah. So they're out having a boot. That's like they're local, you know what I mean? That's yeah. like they're local. They're like, they're sloshed in there, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the joints and that. Yeah. Oh, fucking. We end, we end up like after the gig. He goes, oh, it's all right, that's Scouse and all like that. I was like, yeah, man. Like, he yeah. says, I've got mates up in two dogs in height and all Fucking and then that Leo and then Leo introduced me. I didn't know Skinny Man was at the time, but I did. I'd, I'd heard of him, but at that moment couldn't remember him. But one of my mates was proper into him back in the day. He used to always try and get me into him. Yeah. But I was too into the indie. I was like, nah, I don't like that, lads. I like I like indie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But then like, so, so I got introduced to him and then met him and he was like, yeah, bro. Said so we should do a tune. 
straight off the bat like that. You just said, we should do shit. Yeah, I've got yeah. a good vibe from you. I said, just come and do a tune. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then she said, I will do in the future, lads. I'll get, I'll get on you. And then like, like six months later, that we, st- oh, I, mean, I think it might have been over a year later, bro, that we said, yeah. like, fucking, like, the, I said, like, what's happening? Like, got this tune here called Jack. Do you reckon you could, like, spit a verse on it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? And mm. he's, he's just come back with that verse. And then it was mad, like, he comes to the stu- he just comes to the studio and we met him in the studio. And then yeah. from them, lads, we've been mates, like, text him on WhatsApp and that's yeah. how he, you know what I mean? She's how I am and that. She's how he is. When I go down to London, I always link him. He's a sick man, bro. He's, like, he's got stories for daylight. Like, he's done some mad shit him. Yeah. <laughs> like... Not like in the music industry, yeah. like you don't understand. He was massive lad back in the day, like. Yeah. But he's because he went to jail just after he got signed. That it all like you haven't really heard of him, but yeah. he's battle rapped Eminem and beat him. It's crazy, you know. Yeah. Eminem came to Google it. Eminem came to London, <laughs> battle rapped a, a skinny man, yeah. skinny one, one. <laughs> <laughs> That's Buster. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just, he's like the he's like the original white MC from the UK, yeah. like the yeah. oldest white guy who raps. Yeah. In the UK, yeah, he's, he's been doing, he's like 50 odd lad, you know what yeah. I mean, he's been doing it since like the 90s and that. Yeah, so when you moved back to Liverpool, what like, what happened, what will happen then? We, we went straight back to the rehearsal room that we were in before, the Music Village, it's where Webster is now, Yeah. Um, where the Cairo's are, um, Mason, me and Mason are always popping in there, you know what I mean, we haven't got rooms in there, but we're always like, I'm always in there, but we, yeah, we, we, like, we just went and got a rehearsal room there and the first thing that we done is we, we went back and just announced that we were playing phase one and sold it out dead yeah. quick, like 250 people. Yeah. And no one expected it and everyone like, like, so, and then I remember saying from, from that, when that happens, like a week before phase one, I said, within a year, we'll have sold a thousand tickets. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Everyone was like, fuck off. You know what I mean? But I just kept setting, she set goals and that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, within a year, like 11 months to then, We'd sold the wind factory out to a thousand people, haven't we? Yeah. You know what I mean? So from then it was just Liverpool and then we just done like just done the gigs really, like sold out to phase one. From doing that, we announced the arts club the next gig, like six months later, mm. just after we'd released Jack. Yeah. And then after we 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 announced it, sold out so quick we were like, can we could probably move it up a stage and do the uh, the big stage, you know, the art club theatre, yeah, not yeah. the loft, the theatre. Yeah. I've seen fucking, lads, I'm sure I've seen fucking uh, DJ Premier on there years ago. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, six, six people have played there. I was like, yeah, that'd be heavy. So, literally, moved the, moved the gig up there. Then we'd done that to like, I think it held f- 500, but we sold four because one of the support bands, but like, to be honest, it was, that was like one of the support bands letting us down on. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not gonna say what one. Know what I mean? Know <laughs> <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Know what I'm saying? But like, so we ended up like doing doing the rounds again, doing another single, done to, uh, like like going up for another single, and then done the Wind Factory, and then we only planned to sell six hundred for that. And like, dude, they said, well, usually when they have bands on, they have like a curtain halfway through. Yeah. And like, that's like the. The, the limit, do you know what I mean? Like, you have like 600. When they have dance nights on, you can fit like 2,000 people in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Add a squeeze, you know what I mean? Or like one and a half thousand, something like that. But then we were the first band that had the fucking the thing, you know, like local bands that have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Had like yeah. a thousand tickets and that. We were only planned on selling 600. We were buzzing. And then that night was just sick, lad. That, that was just before Soccer AM. So, I, uh, loads of people who came. How's that come about, Soccer AM? Just through this feeling, like I said before, when we played their Bertie Bash in London. They like really helped us out because we we in like the development when it's, even when we lived in Ipswich we'd be doing this feeling gigs in Colchester in Ipswich and to be pe- uh, in London and to be people there that's how we kind of gain like a little fan base as well every gig that we do Milton Keynes mad yeah. places you know what I mean fucking Lincoln out the out the way but every, no not not on the gigs they were sick gigs but it was just mad you'd never expect to go to these little towns out the way they proper appreciate music them little gaffs you know yeah, no yeah. way they've got nothing better to do like when like imagine like. Walton Vale, and that's like your city centre. That's yeah. that's yeah. The, the town. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, just one of them, bro. They just, they just love music, all them little places. So we just, this feeling, we just got on loads of gigs with them through there and just building up a, a relationship. And um, when we played there, Bertie Bash, Stu from Soccer AM, who's like the guy who does like the Facebook lives and that. Yeah. yeah. He, um, 
he like basically was DJing that night and seeing us play, loved us. We were like, yeah, it is right, lads. Just give him like you know, give him a t-shirt and that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he was buzzing, and he was a big fan. Then. I didn't know much about it. Next thing, he's wearing our T-shirts live on Soccer AM. <laughs> you know, like the Rats T-shirts yeah. and that. Yeah. And then, then the week after that, we our tune was on the goal highlights. Oh, yeah. And then it comes out quick. And then the week after that, we were on there. And like, I didn't yeah. even know. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Did you get a lot of support What? Did you get like a lot of followers? And <clears throat> yeah, we got like, I think that was like 600 followers in about 45 minutes. Man, that. And then it, it was like, all over the day, I don't know, whatever. It was like, there was like six hundred followers. Yeah, but it was. It was more like the people at like, it, it, like after the show, there was like a research. Like it was like Spotify. Like not many people go to like. You gotta admit, like not many people go straight to Facebook or Instagram when yeah. you see you on the telly. They don't. Yeah, like, they so, don't want to. Yeah. They don't want to like you. They want to listen to you. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean. So like, we got loads of Spotify traction more off it. You know what I mean. Like we got a lot yeah. of listeners out of town. I mean, yeah. man, as you said the other day, more people listen to me in Aberdeen than Liverpool. It's crazy, that. Huh? It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, it's crazy. It is on the rise, though, isn't it? The senior. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, like Obviously, Jamie Webster. What did he bit. get? Number five, did he? You got number and six. Number six. Yeah. He's smashing it, isn't Still, he? Still, lad, you know, Klopp didn't get it first time. I'm a blue, you know what I mean? But if it's yeah. compared to Liverpool, you know <laughs> what I mean? Well, yeah. like, Next season, lads, when he's had the second season, the second album, that might go number one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. No, it's not stopping Jamie, lads. It is a boss album, we were talking about it, weren't it? Yeah, some boss yeah, it's album. proper relatable and that. Mm. Proper needed, lads. He's talking about our places we know and all that, aren't mm. it? Like we yeah, like before, there's you know the old break and all that. Yeah, yeah love. Someone needed to do a problem, you know yeah. what I mean? Made up, it was a lad like him. He was, like, he rehearsed next door to us. When we moved back from Ipswich, he was next door. Like, yeah. But this was before, well before the album come out. It was like, everyone was still riding the LA, LA, LA. No one yeah. even knew that he'd done like his own yeah, his own yeah. stuff that he was preparing do you know what I mean yeah <clears throat> I remember him like he was like quite paranoid saying like he, did, he didn't know the, whether people would like it because he's or take him serious you know like because he come from the football and I said lads don't think like that you know what I mean like you like you got you know what I'm saying you've, yeah. you've got the tunes there you know what I'm saying like you've just got you've got a following like he had like yeah. Seven, I said, you've got 76,000 followers. Said, if seven of them, if, if like one out of ten of them like yeah, you're still well smashing it. Yeah, yeah and definitely. They're not, and it's, got, it's not even going to be like that. Like, everyone likes him, do you know what I mean? It's actually, now that he's stopped doing music, he's like branched out to not just Liverpool fans. Yeah. Now, because he's not just doing the foot, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I hadn't really, like, we weren't really into I think I thought it was a, bo- it, I thought it was like, a boss business idea, me, lads. It's a fucking, anyway, you can fucking get there, get there, can't knock someone out to f- how they fucking make it, lads. What the fuck would you do? Yeah, yeah I don't definitely. know. Do you know what I mean? Like, fucking fair play to him. Fucking made up, lad. He's a scouser as well. You know what yeah. I mean? All we show support and they, all bands and that. Like us, The Sway, Kairos, yeah. any, or Rainmaker, all loads of these bands. He share it on the story and all like that all the time. No problem. He just shares it and that. You know what I mean? He always shares, like, local yeah, music. Yeah, it's, it's good for, like, the whole yeah. scene, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. him doing good. Like, that's what I think. You know, I think Liverpool's problems being for years and I've seen from, because I know a lot of people who are in Liverpool now and they've all got a proper boss vibe and it's a vibe. But when I was a kid, like when I started doing it like 10 years ago, so like say seven years ago when I was all them people from like back, it was like all very battle of the bands mentality. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like dead vicious and Few setting, people said that setting each other yeah. up for tricks and... You know what mm. I mean? And say, saying things to like put promoters off and like, like if you're around a promoter then you're going to talk shit about that other band to yeah, make really, your band yeah. do better and do you know what I mean? That yeah. was like the but first ever Battle of the Bands ever was in Liverpool Be- Beatles versus Rory Stone or the things that was the first time the term Battle of the Bands yeah. was used so it's a scouse thing so I reckon that's where it comes from like since then yeah. we've like Liverpool's just had this proper animosity yeah. in the music scene and that's why it's like it can't do anything because mm-hmm. no one supports each other. Where you see all these kids in London and that, and all these kids in Birmingham and all these kids in Manny, they're all like Manny on the map. Oh, one, two, one, fucking London. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? You yeah. know what I mean? Like they're yeah. proper repping their hometown, and if anyone from their hometown's doing something, they're proper supporting it. Yeah. And that's what scousers need to do now because we could proper change the city. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For the better, like make it cool to be something that's not like, you know, negative or, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's been one of the most positive things I've said from the podcast. Like, you know, all the bands, they've never had a bad word to say about, like, any other band. It's always been, like, 
like bringing each other up, isn't it? Like yeah, that's, that's like what it's all about. Like, positive. You gotta look at like every every single scene in the world, every single group of bands in, in any genre, all came up at the same time in the same clubs. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And like it doesn't matter like who like I'm not asked who's the biggest star, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. just wanna fucking get me get a bit of dough, sort myself out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I can do that for I'm doing music then that's the best life in the world, you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. in for like to be, you know, massively famous or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just in it for the respect and the you know the respect that you can give me money for it. <laughs> what I was asking, you know what else sounds yeah, like yeah. I'm in it for money, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. just the, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna fucking come and play at your house for nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But do you get me? Yeah. Like, yeah. So like what what's like gonna be like success for you? Or like the the end goal of your have one type thing? Um I wanna release a couple of just a couple of albums, bro. Like really, like it's not right now. We've got, it's like we've got the second album and the third album boxed. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I, I've been writing mad. Like this band started writing just mad tunes, like all like the crazy stuff, like yeah. crazy stuff that you do with. Because I was just taking the piss. I wasn't like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And got all mad tunes, like pop tunes, rap beats, techno songs. Not even blagging you, lads. Like, yeah. hundreds of tunes. I've got hundreds. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Over a hundred, at least. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, about 20 techno beats, about five hip-hop beats. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a yeah. loop station that I've been doing in lockdown and that. All I do is write tunes, so it's just one of them. Like, I just want to release as much music as possible, personally. Do you know what I mean? And be involved in as much music as possible. Yeah. That's the one thing. Like, you know, don't want to get deep on it. Like, but uh, friends of mine, like... He was a musician, passed away sadly last year, Sean Walsh. His, his music could be played in the church. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, do you get me? And that's like the power of music, like, of like, you live forever, like sort of yeah. thing through yeah. music. Do you know what I mean? Like you're never yeah. going to die. Like even these podcasts. Yeah. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all that, that thing, you're, you're not going to die. People can go and look at you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not like, like, I want everyone to look, look look at me or anything like that. But people who know me, if they want, know what I'm saying? Or, like, me fucking, me kids and that, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, a legacy or type like thing. a legacy. Yeah, you want to use that word, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I want to create that. Yeah. It's not about the doll. It's just about the, the legacy. And, like, it's just, if I can fucking make me and mine, that's all right. I don't yeah. want anything more. I don't want to be a fucking billionaire or nothing like that. Yeah, Shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Fuck that. You know what I mean? Life's not about wealth, lads. Health, not wealth. Yeah. Hmm. You know? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> We've got any more questions then? Um, when do you reckon your like, next music will be, um, be released? So, we're playing it by ear because of the news, yeah. So, this EP that we've got called It Is What It Is that's coming out, that's like, um, we were meant to go and record it in a big fancy studio. Yeah. For let like, alone stay there for a, like, you know, a week or something. But we didn't. We Because obviously lockdown happened. But before lockdown... We went to Whitewood Studios and made five demos in a day. Yeah. Just yeah. in like 12 hours, you know what I mean? Proper yeah. done it, Beatles style, fucking like live, do the vocals, done the vocals yeah. in two takes, all the vocals got done in two takes. And then we had the back and vocals that are pre-recorded in ours. You know, yeah. like all like the little ad, ad, ad bits. Yeah. I'd yeah. like done them to, in ours to, you know, save time in the studio. Yeah. We've done that with the drummer. So we just fucking went in, done them five tunes. And then we've knocked one of them off only because we want to use it later. Yeah. And then kept four of them. And then we're going to, basically, we just said, we're going to have to just get them mixed. Yeah. So, but it's, uh, but you know what? But it's not even even like that because they sounded heavy, bro. Like, sound proper live. Like, I've, yeah. what we've done is that, like, usually when you when you when you get tracks and that, you know what I mean? You get it, you get it mixed and then you get it mastered. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I, I just, I just chose not to get it mastered, so I wanted to have the the demo live feel. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what it is, you know what I mean? So I don't want it to feel, you know what I mean? I want yeah. it to feel a bit different, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. told them to go easy on the mastering and, and just like, do it like, just do it a little, you know what I'm saying? Like make yeah, it sound yeah. live. So that's what it is. There's a few mistakes in there, but the mistakes are just keep in because they just sound, they yeah. sound good. Raw. Like they're not, it's yeah. not like proper Bob on playing, you know what I mean? It's just fucking tunes about life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm. The next one's like a half, like a, like a, 
like a piss take tune in a way. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Because we're always done there like that. Obviously, Mason and the comedy tunes, Mason being in the bands and all like that. Like a lot of the tunes that like our tunes, they, they start off with that, like where it's come from. Like a lot of our tunes, they'd start off as comedy songs yeah. and then we'd change it from a comedy song into a serious song. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. Did you get me? So like, like figure it out. When we were in Cologne, size in 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 a in Germany is Apfel Wein, yeah. Yeah. And we we started singing like she likes Apfel Wein, I like guacamole. <laughs> I've <laughs> been wasting my time, wanted to ride me like a pony. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like taking yeah. the piss, yeah. And then that became figured out. So like yeah. we always like just doing like little piss take songs and this ego was sort of about like the scene in Liverpool. Not now, but yeah. back back then. Like yeah. about six years ago or so, you know what I mean? Like it was about more about like things he experienced when I was younger. It's you yeah. know what I mean? The lyrics are like very like it's like you know it's obscene. You take pictures like a magazine. I can see yeah. by the rips in your skinny jeans that you care what people think, you know what I mean? And like mm. it's all about like people following trends and not going with their own flow and yeah. that's what the tune's about but it's like half like I love that song weren't they <laughs> <with your fucking <laughs> massive ego <laughs> you know what I mean I think you can be proud of your ego though still lads be proud of your ego but I don't, I don't know I don't start <laughs> this I'm making this a thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're releasing the EP yeah like we don't like with the release dates we're playing it by ear because of the news because we don't know what's happening because if you release a song when and then fucking you just go into fucking lockdown or yeah. so, something happens or you know there's some mad that you can't do social media's taken up by the news at the minute yeah. so yeah. it's really bad to like be releasing music right now like it's it's surprising that Jamie's got so well in the climate yeah. that the music yeah. industry's in now you know what I mean like like we were saying before like so we're just playing it by ear man yeah. you know what I'm saying I'll, hopefully we'll speak to you next time when the world's a bit more normal yeah. But I reckon we've been chatting shit for about an hour now. Yeah. More than oh, well, we, we want to wrap it up now then. We one always more question. Yeah, we always finish, finish up. One What's your favourite pint? My favourite pint, Guinness all day. Guinness? All day, lad. All day, Guinness. People think I'm a fucking freak. <laughs> yeah, Literally, every, Guinness. Uh, out of bands and that, they always say Guinness. Yeah. yeah. Always. All my mates think I'm an owl, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uncoolest drink to fucking order, lad. Isn't it? But yeah. When you're in Ireland, everyone enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So that was um, Joe from Bratz. Thanks very much. Um, once again, this is sponsored by Northern Movements. I've been Mo Jaddix and that was a nice chit to chat there. This one's called Daily Grind. in bed thinking about things in my head like ain't it strange when you walk down memory lane how far do you can go to you discover your age it's 21 turning 22 now you've smoked your adolescence right down to the tooth and you're wondering what it is that you're going to do while everybody's waiting for somebody to prove they can it's all going to plan not gonna waste my time, a daily grind is gonna get me by from time to time You couldn't let go if you'd even tried When you're all dressed up, are you feeling some tight? It's over now Take a look, take a look at all the things that you've done Listen to the voice of reason wants the climb has to come So turn off, tune in, drop out and begin When you go, let it out, then you've got to let it in Just a bag of aspirations that was filled to the brim Turn nothing into something till you start it all again And when's it going to end? Not gonna waste my time A daily grind is gonna get me by From time to time You couldn't let go if you'd even tried Couldn't let go if you'd even tried Waste my time A daily grind is gonna get me by From time to time Couldn't let go if you'd even tried When you 
it all stressed up Do you feel in some size? Not gonna waste my time in daily grind Is gonna get me by from time to time You couldn't let go if you'd even tried When you're all dressed up, do you feel in some size? Waste my time in daily grind Is gonna get me by from time to time You couldn't let go if you'd even tried When you're all dressed up, do you feel in some size?